right, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry to interrupt your nice concert and uh, to step back. <clears throat> In this event, but at this time, I'd like to tell you something about uh, uh, why we also came to this conference, and it's the mobile threats out there. Uh, the name of the topic is fighting automated online fraud, but since this is Mobile World Congress, I'll be focusing on mobile malware, of course, and how to prevent it and how to uh, defend yourselves, your businesses, your customers. When you talk about defense, we're talking about many products and services out there, but one, one part of it is also awareness, and that's probably the most difficult part because everyone needs to be aware if you want to be safe, specifically if you're talking about businesses. So I'll actually use this opportunity to give you a little bit of overview on what is hot in the world of Android malware these days. But first of all, as probably not everyone here is familiar with our company, a little, a little bit about ESET. So we're a global input security company actually uh, celebrating quite an anniversary this year. With 30 years of technology and 25 years of uh, existence of the company itself, uh, over the years we grew to pretty much all of the world and I'll be stressing out again, I'm talking technical here, uh, I'll be stressing out the presence in the world when it comes to R&D centers, which are seven at this point and in the two months there will be nine of them. Uh, R&D is very important to us and research itself because that, that is the focus on knowing your enemy. It's the same as you should be doing if you want to know who is the attacker. And that's how we were tailoring and, and fine-tuning our technology over all those years. In, uh, in total, if you're a business and consumer, we're number five. Uh, when we talk about um, <clears throat> business, uh, we're number four. Oh, sorry, enterprise, number four. We're protecting more than 100,000 endpoints all over the world, and we are present and actively selling in more than 200 countries uh, in the world. When it comes to how we're uh, building the products, it's not that we're focusing on one particular um, uh, area or feature. We're trying to have the products very, very well balanced uh, among good detection, very high performance, uh, definitely the lowest number of false positives as possible, because any incident, whether it's real or it's not real, meaning it's an FP or false positive, needs to be investigated. It takes time and money, of course. On top of it, uh, we do have um, solutions for pretty much every platform out there that needs security. So it's Mac uh, and Linux as well, and of course Android. That's what I'm going to be talking about today. Last but not least, um, throughout all those years, uh, it was more, mostly about securing uh, consumer users and ha having seamless security. But nowadays, when the attacks are becoming more and more sophisticated, and you, to, you need to catch attackers while they are doing reconnaissance in your networks, you need to have more visibility. That's why we are also uh, engaging in the world of EDR, endpoint detection and response tools, and um, uh, incident response and intelligence, and I'll actually mention a little bit about it at the end of the presentation. So let's get to the Android malware, and those of you who are interested, don't be shy, come closer, because you're not gonna see much. And actually, you should see because this is what's uh, currently working in order to uh, trick people to lose some money. So I'm going to be talking about mostly malware. If you look at the overall situation over there, 75% uh, roughly is something we call potentially unwanted applications. These things are not straightforward and malicious. They usually cause some sort of uh, annoyances. Uh, like showing uh, aggressive ads, maybe they will be leaking some sensitive information, but you're not going to, uh, let's say, straightforward suffer some damage. That's the part yellow up here, where specifically I'll be focusing on, on mobile hacking Trojans and ransomware. If you look at the overall picture of prevalence in 2016, this is coming from the telemetry from our uh, devices, Android devices. Uh, this is what you see, Russia, Ukraine in, in the first two places. Actually, this is kind of the origin of mobile malware when we're talking about this, going back five or six years. Later on, we saw adoption in the US, a little bit different types of, and now we, we also see like 2016, uh, some uptake in, in China. And China is by the very diff diff uh, different market because they allow a lot of things that are not allowed, let's say, in the Western world, such as a lot of aggressive. Uh, at this place 
This is the situation of uh, how many incidents we, we understood over the last few years. So we said 2014 was kind of down compared to today. It's not a different uh, An incident, so that you know, is not an infected device, it's a preventing attack as well. So anytime any of our users encounter something we consider malicious, it's going to be counted here. And now specifically ransomware, I'm not sure how much you can graph. You see there's quite a spike last summer, and then uh, quite a spike in, in uh, the incidents uh, in the beginning of this year, and then it went down. So you look at it from the 2016 perspective, you could say, oh, it's actually going down. But overall, the trending line is still growing up, and, and it's not important to look at only the absolute numbers, but actually how this malware is being implemented and what it's able or capable of doing. Because today, same as in the world of the uh, quantity is low. It's about actually and it's by uh, creating targeted campaigns, targeting hundreds, two hundreds of users, specifically in the domain of ransomware, the bad guys starting to target you know, one country one week, then they give it a break, they try another one. So probably just to lower the, the bar, you know, to, to increase awareness so that people forget what happened two months ago and they're going to fall for the same trick again and media does not really kick it up. So ransomware. We have three different categories uh, in the mobile world and there's a little bit difference to desktop uh, even though they're heavily inspected. Because, well, you have lock screen, which is kind of what happened in desktop, of course, which is basically preventing using your device by overlaying your applications by something you didn't want to have there. The crypto ransomware, uh, those are the things that are going to go after your files and basically make them unreadable unless you pay ransom to unlock them. And there's something very specific that we call locker pin, which actually in this case, uh, malware is going to generate a pin, which you don't know, many times not even the attacker. So you're not able to unlock the device unless you pay, and then it's remotely unlocked by the, uh, the, the attackers. So looking at the log stream ransomware, which is pretty much the first first uh, uh, kind of family is going back to 2013, let's say. Many times it's uh, a lot about you know police themed, um, government going after you, lots of FBI everywhere. And the, the whole idea here is you know to scare you that you are hosting or you were browsing some illegal content. Of course, there's lots of porn, wares, and these kind of things, trying to make you scared and you, that you would respond. In the beginning, it was very basic, uh, usually poor language. If, if it was um, um, translated to other languages, you could see all this poor auto, auto translation by Google and things like that. So you can very easily spot that it's this is not a legit application. Well, you don't care that much if you already see this screen because your device is not usable, but you're really sure that this is not legit. Later on, they were starting to make very custom you know, for uh, every single country. Uh, they were changing languages. They were actually, I'm oh, sorry, I skipped this one. Uh, they are even taking pictures of yourself uh, by the camera. So, it, in order to kind of make an impression, they know much more about you, and basically, you need to uh, make a hasty, hasty action. So, when you talk about the, the ransomware as, uh, as a crypto stuff, the first one is, is probably SimLocker, which we discovered in 2014. Um, this is really an interesting case because it was, I could say, really lame at the time it came out. Uh, the encryption was very, very simple. The uh, decryption key was stored on the device, so it was possible to basically get it and you could you could decrypt the files. But there was a lot of development. We've been mon monitoring this this thread since since ever. In the first year of, of the monitoring, there are around 50 new new different variants, pretty much one per week, all the time trying new new tricks. And by the time they actually uh, went to, uh, sorry, they went to um, uh, stuff like um, uh, exchange the keys with the server so they couldn't unlock, the, unlock them on the device uh, and, and things like that. So pretty much improved it to the state where uh, the only thing you can do is you either have some sort of security uh, solution to bypass it or you'll have to pay the ransom or just factory reset device. Locker pin. So this is, this this is the newest one, and it's out there only for maybe around two years. Uh, as I said, this one is going to generate a pin, uh, and not even the attacker knows it. And the idea is that they will they will actually unlock it as remote uh, through like you know remote control, you could say, uh, which is also already giving you some idea how you can prevent it. Because if you're in enterprise environment and you have a mobile device management solution, you can actually 
actually uh, reset pin and that's how you can unlock the device. The other way, and it's uh, pretty much active, um, valid for other types of malware, is uh, Android bug mode, but that's not for everyone, right? That's only for geeks. Uh, so this one is using click jacking so that you know what it means, uh, because to, to uh, unlock, the, uh, to basically change the pin, you need to be device administrator. So they're going to give you some sort of fake screen asking you whatever. This time, like, you know, we're installing package, you know, I'd like to continue. But they're actually overlaying another screen, which actually is asking for the device administration. This, in this case, set storage encryption um, activity or, or uh, permission. And that's the whole idea how all of these uh, click jacking is working, and it's working for also other stuff, specifically the banking malware I'll be talking about in a second. So I have two examples. Uh, one is Mazarbo, the other is a campaign, we just Australian banking campaign, uh, because the name of my not so uh, interesting or too complicated. So this one will spread by SMS messages first. Uh, basically, you got the link to an APK, of course, uh, and you click, uh, agree, and install it. First, it was spreading in, in Denmark, and it was targeting two-factor authentication. This was, this is probably something that goes back to 2009, 10, you know, like a uh, couple of, couple of uh, 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 Android families that we're working in couple with desktop component because basically it works the way that you are using uh, banking from your desktop. Malware infects you, but you have two-factor authentication through mobile. So they need to trick you to actually install something on the mobile device. How about sending you that SMS? So you get SMS, you click install the fake certificate, fake update for banking application, something like that. And at that point, the attacker is able to intercept the authorization SMS. And that's pretty much what this thing was doing. Later, we saw it spreading as a fake WhatsApp uh, application in uh, in uh, Italy, and it's even asking you like if you want to like, uh, um, activate the, the app, you need to provide your uh, payment uh, credentials, which in ca this case is basically asking you for card details, including the CVC number. So basically, using your uh, credit card uh, details. It's just just another way of doing phishing. But also, they, they didn't stop there. They were actually able to lock and wipe the device as well. So, again, something that we saw in the world of desktop malware in 2009, we started calling things blended threats because it was not anymore spy trojan, you know, a password trojan, backdoor, a bot. It's, it was all together, you know, all the same time, and it only depends on the intention of the attacker, what it's going to be doing in the next hour. And this, this is exactly what we're seeing here as well. So the Australian banking campaign, the reason I call it that way is because it, it was targeting mostly Australia, a little bit, little bit of New Zealand, and also Turkey. Uh, the selection of banks, why is that? I don't know, probably works with the attackers and their knowledge about what's happening there. Or maybe they're coming from those countries. But attribution is hard. So this time it was uh, spread by fly fake flash player, uh, being sent uh, in these like very weird URL links. These links were actually regenerated at 20 30 minutes right after they got blacklisted by security solutions so it wasn't that easy to work. So again people needed to take action click the uh, apk agree to install and then they, they were already victim and there were two things uh, of course it was uh, made to bypass two-factor authentication but the second thing is that it was going directly after around 20 mobile banking apps which is kind of novel in this area and the way they were Doing it is also uh, kind of uh, interesting and advanced. So here's the here's the idea. So you have the the infected device and there's this malicious server. So the first, right after it installs, it's going to send device information with all of the applications which are in, which are installed to the server, and the server responds back with a list of apps which are supported, you could say. So the moment the supported application, which is one of the internet banking, is launched, it's going to announce it to the server, and server goes back with uh, uh, the, the correct impression of the targeted application. So basically you get overlay with this fake app. And uh, by means of click jacking, or actually you know, just um, overlaying it, uh, the original application with the fake one, you're going to input all of the uh, uh, payment credentials uh, into the fake app and that gets sent to the attacker. So that's basically the idea, a couple of examples how that might look. 
And do you think that you're safe if you're only using uh, apps of Google Play? Um, the news is that you should be aware that there might be malware as well. In the uh, back in the days, there were things that happened in this phishing Facebook uh, campaign where there were almost a million installs. They were hiding be behind these two uh, fake games, and it actually took quite some time um, to, to take it down. It was available for two months. Uh, we we're talking really you know, a while back and things improved a lot since then. This was, again, very simple. They were just, at a certain point in time, they would just uh, display this uh, page like, yes, if, if you want to use this game, you need to sign into the Facebook, so you put, input the credential and they, they were gone. The biggest one that we saw, and that was connected for seven months, is this uh, clicker. Um, so against a couple of numbers, you know, seven months out there, um, 800,000 installs, and daily over 3K infected users. The whole idea here was uh, using something popular, so a couple of uh, popular games, you know, GTA, uh, Minecraft, and so on. Of course, all of these were fake, and the whole idea behind it and monetization model was uh, in the background clicking on, on ads uh, every 60 seconds. And then, of course, Pokemon Go was quite a frenzy last year, so uh, the bad guys didn't wait and, and, and used it for some scam. So again, we have a couple of uh, applications such as like guides and cheats for for Pokemon Go and uh, some some you know unlocking of the of the application and the extra points and stuff like that uh, started to appear. That's trying to kind of scare the user or uh, lure some way the credentials from him. Like you know the first two are about scaring them. Like uh, you know you have a virus and you know you have more viruses. But the last one is actually you've been randomly selected from Auckland. Uh, to get a f uh, free spin, so you need to you know, input your credentials to actually get, uh, claim the prize. The ultimate um, goal was this Pokemon Lottery, so basically the device is made un un unusable, and um, again, um, while you're seeing this, there is going to be clicking on ads in the background, so basically they're monetizing while, while it's uh, on. Android Charger, this one I'm only mentioning because this is probably the first ransomware out there. Uh, the, the fake application here was the idea that you, you are going to have some application which optimizes better life, which of course is uh, very important for anyone who is spending the whole day in a conference on Wi-Fi. But of course it didn't optimize anything, it was a pretty much multi-purpose Trojan, and in the end it would lock your screen and uh, request uh, point to um, bitcoins. Last but not least, this is very fresh, we only uh, discovered it a couple of weeks ago and uh, uh, we actually put up some blog about it in detail uh, on our blog post, uh, blog willifsecurity.com So this one was actually faking um, a real weather application Going back in this, it was quite easy, we could say, to get it to the Google Play Now it's much more difficult than if, if the bad guys want to do it and bypass all of the uh, security measures, they need to mimic a real, real working application because, of course, there's a lot of scrutiny on these. So it actually shows weather, but on top of it, it's a kind of like multi-purpose uh, Trojan. Um, and it, there's like you know two, two uh, different flavors of it uh, that you can see. But of course, the publisher is going to be different, um, and uh, different certificate and so on, so on. Again, this one is able to go after. Uh, um, Credential from banking applications as well, and offers like you know complex functionality. In this case, it was going after Turkish banks, so maybe relation, maybe not. I don't know. So going to some sort of conclusion, and uh, what do you can do uh, to protect yourselves? Well, it depends, of course, uh, who you are. If you are a like consumer, home, home uh, person, you need to be aware of what is possible, and you need to you need to care about where you're installing um, the applications from. Android is a platform which gets attacked all the time. There's a lot of users over there, so where there's users, there's money and there's cybercrime. They are implementing concepts proven to work in, in Windows malware and they are improving all the time. As I said, quantity is not all. It's also about you know, the quality of the, what they're doing and efficiency. They're able to get through Google Play security, so don't rely on anything and think about what you're doing and whether the application you're installing is really what it is if, if it's coming from the same source. The best protection is of course prevention, but prevention is not just by me means of some uh, utility service or, or application, but it's also about awareness and that's, that's why we do all of the research and that's why 
We are sharing this mission with people like, you know, like I'm doing here today. One of the things you can do, of course, is endpoint security uh, products. Um, you can have either consumer versions, you can have uh, business versions or enterprise versions. Specifically when I, when I mention managed solutions, because sometimes you are able to take over the device which was already taken over by, by uh, ransomware. So it's pretty important. And when it comes to learning, what you can do on top of, of um, uh, using various security products. Uh, we actually launched security services uh, last year, which is basically our way to share information with, uh, with our uh, enterprise customers. Uh, there are two main things here. It's early warning system and automated malware analysis portal. Not all, both of the things are for everyone. The early warning system is mostly for banking uh, customers, or banks to be specific because we're able to, by, the, by all the research and all the monitoring we're doing in the, in the background, we're able to find out there's a new campaign out there, uh, you know, going after, specifically after some clients or some banks, so we can say like, hey guys, you should warn your users because something might be going on. Second one is um, actually giving you possibility to upload your malicious or potentially malicious samples or anything suspicious you find, and we will get back to you with uh, detailed information. This is really only for experts. So many time we are actually talking to security operation centers or SOCs um, to basically provide this type of security for the others. So that's all from me. Uh, thank you for paying attention. I hope you're enjoying the conference and this networking even right here. Uh, we are still open, so enjoy some more drinks, enjoy the conference. We're ESET. If you would like to learn more, www.willysecurity.com. Thank you. Of course, I'll be around, so if you have any questions, catch me. I'm happy to answer.